The hallmark of yeah, successful people. Oh, sorry. I thought John was going to do it and he didn't do it. <laughs> oh, I don't. Uh, you read the quote. Oh, sorry. Once you were doing it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, we can edit this, right? <laughs> yes. Go ahead and start the quote. <laughs> okay. The hallmark of successful people is that they are always stretching themselves to learn new things. Welcome back to Champion Reads, the online book club podcast where we discuss the best books by the best authors and the best principles to help us lead our best business, our best personal lives, our best lives in general, and best lives in specific. Champion Reads is brought to you by Champion Circle, the mastermind accountability networking group designed to bring together like-minded people to help accelerate your success and grow faster, stronger, and better. We're joined today by the uh, founder of Champion Circle, a global mastermind leader, Mr. John Kovacs Jr. Our executive producer, Mr. William Blake, dyslexic achievement coach, and myself, Ian Sturmer. I am a support, sorry, a success support specialist. I just came up with that new title and I'm seeing how it works. <laughs> um, Today, we're going to be discussing the book Mindset by uh, Dr. Carol S. Dweck. Um, Mindset is one of those seminal books that uh, if you haven't read yet, you definitely need to pick up a copy of uh, one of the. Oh, thank you, John, He's holding up his copy there. And uh, Mindset is really talking about um, not only from this quote at the beginning, successful people are stretching themselves to learn new things. Not only is the book talking about new things we can learn, but the fact that we can learn new things. We can learn new ways of doing things. So I'm going to start out with a quick definition of mindset, because I always misuse this definition. I make it too broad. And I kind of uh, confuse mindset with uh, Stephen R. Covey's paradigm definition. And the paradigm is kind of like your overall view of the world and how everything works together. And he talks about shifting how we view those things. Uh, Carol Listweck, her idea with mindset, she's talking about two specific mindsets or types of mindset. She talks about a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And I'm going to do a, just a quick definition of those. A fixed mindset is someone who believes that things are as they are. I'm either smart or I'm not smart. I'm either talented or I'm not talented. I'm artistic or I'm not artistic. And that's all there is to it. And maybe if I'm not artistic, I can practice and get a little bit better. But it really, there's, there's limits around what I can do. And I'm stuck within those limits. A growth mindset means that we can change who we are. We can change how we view things. You know, if you're not artistic now, you can learn to be artistic. Doesn't mean you'll become a great artist no matter what, but you can learn to see things artistically. You can learn to see art around you. You can learn to be better at it and become a good artist. You know, a great musician, are they born with an innate ability to play music and hear it? Or do they practice, practice, practice until they're so good at it? And that's really what this book focuses on. Um, from children through adults, um, are we finding ourselves in a fixed mindset where we're trapped within this bubble and, and can't go beyond that bubble or that glass ceiling we create for ourselves? Or do we have a growth mindset where we can move beyond anywhere we want to? You know, the sky is the limit if we're willing to put forth the effort and learn that. So, I'm going to give the a, a first example and then kind of turn it over to my co-host here to, to see what they say. 
Um, for many, many years, people believed that you could not run faster than a four minute mile. It was a scientific law that it could not be broken until a man named Roger Bannister came along and he broke that four minute mile. And since then, you know, now it's college and sometimes high school students are breaking a four minute mile, something that even the greatest people thought could never happen just a few years ago or maybe a couple of decades now. So how does that idea of a growth mindset help us or a fixed mindset hold us back? Um, so I turn over to my co-host to, to get their input. To answer your question about how it can help us go forward and then hold us back, it goes back to my favorite, my favorite quote. I've been using that a lot lately of one of the quotes that I really like by Henry Ford. What he says is, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. And in that frame of reference, you think about it, and it really comes down to your thoughts. Because your thoughts lead to your words. Your words lead to your actions. Actions lead to your habits. Habits lead to how your character is, and your character determines your destiny. So a single thought has the potential of changing our destiny. So when it comes to a growth and fixed mindset, it really comes down to, can we do it? Is this something that I believe in myself? Is this something I believe in other people that we can do it? If so, you can. Or I don't think people can do this. I don't think we can break the four minute mile. You're right. You can't. It really comes down to the, the mindset of what's going on. Mindset's such an interesting thing, and uh, I, I love, I love the examples and the ideas behind it because it is what you allow it to be. And I haven't been on the allowing train for a very long time until I was, and to be open and opportunistic and. I guess allowing <laughs> certain things into your life is a choice. And the really cool thing about mindset is that it's under your control, but mindset is something that you can allow something to happen. And so it really is the power of decision. Um, you can decide to be stubborn or you can decide to be available or open, open-minded. <laughs> you can decide to be a lot of things and the power of mindset is so so magnetizing because once you open one door of a particular mindset you open up many doors of particular mindsets there's unlimited potential that comes with the mind this is why we talk about the power of you know mastermind methodologies and so many other cool things is because we we know that when you take a mind which is incredible in and of itself and you put it with multiple other minds they create their own intangible third mind or the mind of infinite intelligence and so mind is the if you take the word and you break it in half you've got mind and you've got set so you've got mind which is what we already have and to set it in a particular direction is one of the other ways to describe and I guess, define mindset. It's where, what direction and what you allow it to be open to or to um, to believe and to perceive. Thank you. I love that. And mindset, you know, we're, we're talking about a, in, her, in the Dr. Dweck's situation, a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. So is your mindset something that's innate within you or is it something that we're taught? Um, and she answers that with the answer, yes. Um, sometimes it's innate, but a growth mindset can be taught to us. Likewise, a fixed mindset can be taught. And one of the experiments that she uh, conducted in her research for this, uh, she took some young children and gave them puzzles and let them put the puzzle together. And when they had completed it, some of them she came up and said, wow, you did that puzzle. You must be so smart. 
And the second group she went up to and said, wow, you completed that puzzle. You must be such a hard worker. And then she continued on with this experiment and giving them new puzzles. And most of the children who she complimented on being smart would search for puzzles that were an equal level of difficulty. And they didn't want to challenge themselves more. The people who she told were hardworking would look for harder and harder puzzles to complete those. And one of the interesting things about this is it says the, the fixed mindset kind of says, if I'm smart, I'm smart, that's it. But they tend to be afraid to expand themselves because that might show them failing and no longer smart. On the other side, those who were taught they were hardworking or told they were hardworking wanted to continue working harder and harder to find more and more challenges. And those are the ones that learn to love those challenges. So a lot of this mindset, um, we may have something built into us innately, just from how we were born, how our brain works, how we were raised. But we can teach ourselves to move from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset if we work at that. Um, and of course, the mind's a complicated thing, so nothing goes easily. But I love that idea that a growth mindset seeks out challenges as opposed to a fixed mindset seeks to do the things that are easy already. And a, a quick example, um, once in a while I get on my phone and I start playing silly games, those little time waster games. And I'll play some and there'll be something like, you know, solve the math problem, two plus two equals, and you type in four, and you get a little like fireworks and it says, great job, you did it. And I turn off the game because I'm annoyed that they're going to compliment me on something so stupid <laughs> and so silly. Um, you know, compliment when I do something that's actually hard. And I don't actually play games that are two plus two, but this is a, an idea. <laughs> um, so I love that in the games that I'm looking for a growth mentality. I'm not always good at that, but I can see I want to get something harder. I want something more challenging. I don't want to have some instant gratification for something I didn't work at. And I think as we look in our lives, we should be saying that. Are we doing the same thing over and over again because it's easy and we get complimented on it? Or are we seeking to expand and challenge ourselves? And if we found things that we love and we enjoy and we're good at, and I'm going to turn this over to my co-host to, to find the answer for me here. How do we teach ourselves to seek a challenge that we might fail at rather than staying in that comfort zone? How do we move out of our comfort zone? Um, Willie, looks like you've, you've got an answer to help me out here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I love this question because it goes with a video I saw from Gary V literally 30 minutes ago right before we jumped on this and it was him with a 10 year old kid and the kid asked if gary would oh what's the word sponsor him and gary's like sponsor he's like yeah will you sponsor me like uh get a get a video with me so i can put on my channel he says what do you want to do it for he said to make money so gary's like well i can give you money right now kid stands there looks around Okay. Gary pulls out his wallet, hands him $10, hands him another 10, hands him a hundred. And the kid's like, awesome. Would you still record a video for me and sponsor me? And Gary goes into this principle that money is going to come, but unless you put in the effort to do it, it won't feel satisfactory. So Gary could have basically built, built, excuse me, his YouTube channel to get him subscribers because he made a video with him. But instead, Gary gave him some money and then taught him the valuable lesson of you're not going to feel fulfilled if you don't put in the hard work, put in the time to then create it yourself. He's like, go create it yourself. Go do what you love and just start adding value to get subscribers. And I love that because it rings so true with what we are talking about, that that satisfaction that we are wanting as my screen turns purple, goodness gracious, 
the satisfaction that we are wanting comes from the work that we put into it. Because when we put in that work, we know that we did something to get that result rather than just having a handout. Yeah, Rome wasn't built in a day. A baby didn't learn to walk overnight. And the world's greatest performers didn't just like magically have these powers and abilities. Rather, it takes time. And that's the problem is people don't think that they have to put in the time. There are too many uh, cheat codes and there are too many easy schemes and things that keep people from believing that if I work hard at this, that I will get better at it. I have to tell you a story, guys. Um, I was 18 years old and I still did not know how to snap my fingers. And I was sitting there in church, in the pews, just doing the motions, just trying to figure it out. And I was, you know, working at it and working at it and working at it. And this has been like weeks of trying to learn how to snap because I wanted to snap. I thought that was cool. Everyone could snap. It was like whistling, like everyone could whistle. I still can't whistle really well. I can whistle, but I have to, you know, I cheat. I have to bring oxygen in rather than blow oxygen out for me to whistle. And I wanted to improve on this skill. So after tons and tons of practice, well, the the pastor or the leader of the church got up and said, let us pray. And that was my final straw because I had to stop trying before anything. And it got really, really quiet. And out of nowhere, I finally hit the combination. And it was the loudest snap of my entire life. It was glorious. It was so provoking. I was like, you were praying and I could not celebrate. But I just knew in my heart and in my mind that not only did I create a great distraction, some people even turn around and look back as if you know something had fell or there was a great smack or Maybe it was one of those poppers that people throw at uh, um, on the ground during you know the Fourth of July celebrations, but it was loud, and I couldn't have been more proud. But I can't tell you that I can't just like take my hand and snap and know how to snap. It takes time, and so if you're going to have a growth mindset, you've really got to understand what growth really means. It takes time. Anything takes time. So the common denominator here is time, okay? You've got to put in it. If you don't put in it, then you'll have a fixed mindset, which is I can or I can't. That's it. No gray. I'm there or I'm not. I'm it. I'm stubborn or I'm not. And it makes you sound like a robot. And you know what? I'm calling you all out. If you are, <laughs> if you are a fixed mindset kind of person, you are either a robot or you are stuck in what Napoleon Hill talks about in his book, Outwitting the Devil as a Drifter, because you are not open. Now, you can use fixed mindset belief systems to help you achieve certain things, and we'll get into that, and that's part of the complexity and the depth of Carol Dweck's amazing book here. But at a simplistic level, you're either growing or you're dying. <laughs> and uh, I, I believe that wholeheartedly, and I know I've gone completely off script and topic from really the book and the answer, but I just, I just wanted to share that. Love that. Now I'm going to say, if you're saying you're the growing or dying, you are, or you aren't, that sounds like a fixed mindset right there, that it's an either or, <laughs> um, but you brought up a really great point and you said it, it takes time to do these things. And I think that's one of the keys to understanding the difference of a fixed mindset and a, a growth mindset. A fixed mindset looks at the finish line and my passing this finish line and a growth mindset looks at the journey to get to that finish line. And there's a, there's a great quote um, from Alexander the Great, or at least a, a, a quote, talk, quote talking about him. Um, at the end of his life says, Alexander looked across his, his empire and wept because there were no more lands to conquer. He finished it. He conquered the world he knew at that time. And then he was sad 
because the journey was over. He hit the finish line and there was nothing left. I think that's a, a definition of a growth mindset that when you achieve your goal, I'm not saying you should be sad or weep about it, but when you achieve the goal, are you instantly saying, where's the next thing? What's the next thing I can do? Um, I think uh, Lance Armstrong, the cyclist, had a similar one. He was interviewed after he retired, and the, the reporter said, what are you going to miss the most about this now that you retired from cycling? And he said, the practices. So I thought it was interesting, not the crowd cheering, not the awards, not the money or the endorsements, the practice, the thing that nobody else saw him doing, because he saw the growth that he could have. He didn't say, I'm already the best. I can relax now. He loves the journey, the building on it. And to me, that's kind of the core of the growth mentality is I can get better. I can learn. I can improve. I can learn not only to snap my fingers, I can snap both my fingers. Just showing off, John. See? <laughs> um, but finding that journey, finding that joy in the journey that we, we hear that phrase all the time. Um, so I guess, how do we teach ourselves to love the journey instead of just trying to cross the finish line? Um, we all set goals. We all try to achieve those goals. We all celebrate those goals. Um, but I'm kind of turn that over uh, probably for our last topic in this round. How do we learn to celebrate the journey of what we're doing and the growth in that um, while striving to achieve our goals? Yeah. What comes to my mind is actually consciously spending time to celebrate what's going on. Because I know for myself, and I'm sure for people who are listening, there are you out there who are just like me, to where it is difficult to celebrate and reward ourselves with something. Because either we don't know what we want as a reward or to celebrate, or we don't feel worthy to have the reward or celebrate because we get into the motion of we need to be working. And if we're not working, we are unworthy of whatever unworthiness and subconscious stuff that's going in our innards. Right. So I think of, we got to consciously be rewarding ourselves to then grow with our, the set that we have in mind. I, I know for myself, every single day, I have something that I need to do towards my goal that I'm working on. And I have to do it that day. If not, a consequence gets activated. However, after the week, if I do it every single day, then I get this reward. And this could be on going on a special date with my wife to getting myself a trampoline. Got that last week. Woo woo. This could be getting an audio book. This could be simply going out for ice cream, maybe taking your family out for, for a nice walk or playing 30 minutes of video games, whatever it is, but consciously making the effort to then celebrate what is going on. And I know that as I've done that, that has really helped me to keep motivated down the path to be able to enjoy the journey. Because, of course, we want the results. That's what we've been aiming for this whole time. But if we're only thinking about that, how in the world are we going to be able to stay motivated and disciplined? Because as we go there on that journey, it's either it's going to be one lonely walk and it's going to feel like crap. Or we celebrate those milestones, reward ourselves, and just enjoy the wonderful journey at hand. Yeah, to, to back that up too, I mean, to each their own, right? You know what motivates you. And so when you give yourself motivation through reward systems, you teach yourself that that's something that you get for, you know, achievement or goals or whatever it might be. Um, but most people don't think about adding rewards to a particular line of thinking. If you are, someone who finds themselves in a fixed mindset all the time and you want to reward um, growth and open mindsets, then you need to be highly aware of your thinking and abilities. 
and also being willing to make those quick decisions. I think I think it's just interesting because it, it, it really could, we could go down the rabbit hole of saying, well, is giving yourself a reward for having growth mindset a fixed mindset because you have A equals B if you accomplish B? Uh, um, and, and I don't know. I, I think I get too deep into it when I think about it. But if you look at the idea that uh, let's just look at like a linear graph, right? Um, a graph can grow in exponential um, uh, growth patterns if multiplied by the right things. Um, however, if the combination is incorrect or if it leaves out um, uh, the, the wrong components to make it grow, then it will continue in a flat line. And that's just as simple as it could be. Now, numbers are a tough comparison too because numbers are linear and that could also mean a calculated trajectory um but they're part of the growth process and so i think that when it comes to rewarding yourself or helping yourself or celebrating the wins um you need to be okay with the idea that your motivation should be built on the growth and not the accomplishment because people want to reward themselves for getting things done rather than the path or the uh, the the journey or the um, accomplishments that you that you that you want to achieve. So I think looking at it from a different perspective will be a quite mind opening experience for you. So I, I I get lost in the rabbit holes of these discussions, but I I quickly just love the concepts because. Uh, if you pick up this book, you know, Mindset, and you read this, Carol Dweck, right at the beginning, she gives you dozens of examples of mindset versus, um, you know, closed offness. And I love, love her thoughts because she gives us tangible, practical advice. Yeah, love that. And as I was thinking there, the, the, the uh, fixed mindset focused on really the ending I said, okay, if you're skydiving, it's either a pass fail. You either succeed or don't succeed. There's nothing in the middle when you're skydiving. Parachute opens, you succeed. Parachute doesn't open, you fail. And that's all there is. But I haven't gone skydiving yet. But as I understand it, um, it's the falling part that's exciting. And it's when you land, of course, you want to be successful. But that's not the goal. The goal is to enjoy that journey as much as possible. And the... The idea of taking the growth in the journey and enjoying that, taking advantage of that time. Um, I'm going to finish up with one little last example. Uh, honored to have a friend of mine, uh, Miss Patty Sipes. I'm going to shout out her book she just wrote called It's Upside Down, um, available on Amazon. And in this book, she talks about how she started putting together puzzles, those little jigsaw puzzles. And how she gained, gained or became to love those. If I can get my dyslexia and speaking out here, uh, I might need to talk to William about some help on that one. <laughs> so um, Patty Stipes talked about putting together puzzles. And part of it is the end when you complete the puzzle, there's a bit of a joy there. There's an excitement in doing that. But she found so much joy in every piece that fit in brought her more joy finding all the solving the little puzzle within the big puzzle getting these pieces together finding different perspectives um, and she does a wonderful way of, of tying this into business life and success but it's not always finishing the puzzle and getting that picture at the end but it's learning it's getting better it's realize you can do a harder and harder puzzle feeling that sense of accomplishments not just in of finishing something, but knowing you're becoming better and better and better. Um, and I love, you know, there's good, better, best. We talk about that. And, you know, we all want to be the best, but in some ways it's better to be better. Um, we want to continually be getting better rather than be the best. Um, and that growth, that moving, because once you achieve the best, Sometimes we want to rest on our laurels and we just kind of stop with that. Um, so I'm going to close off with that point that's enjoy the journey and grow and learn from the journey in that growth mindset. 
rather than a fixed win or don't win. And with that, we're at the top of our half hour. So I want to thank you for joining us today. I want to especially thank uh, my co-hosts, uh, Champion Circle founder, Global Mastermind leader, Mr. John Kobach Jr., William Blake, Dyslexic Achievement Coach, and all-around wonderful guy and inspiration to me, and myself, Ian Sturmer. If you've liked what you've uh, heard from us today, then please, please like us. There's a little button right about there. If you hit that one, um, that will say like, and that will give us a wonderful sense of achievement in our journey that we're going on. And if you'd like to know more about us, you can also hit the subscribe button just underneath it. Uh, so please like and subscribe if you have enjoyed this. If you'd like to reach out to us with questions, comments, likes, dislikes, you can reach us at info at mychampionstruggle.com through your email, info at mychampionstruggle.com, or visit mychampionstruggle.com to find out about the other great activities, masterminds, and uh, things you can learn from us at My Champion Circle. So with that, thank you. And we look forward to continuing our discussion as we delve deeper into Dr. Carol Lestwick's incredible book called Mindset. Thank you and have a wonderful week.